Uh, morning. morning. Well, thank you. <laughs> Special good morning. Uh, yeah, it was wonderful to spend that time in worship. And I think worship is so great and it's a time when you can really meet with the Lord. And sometimes when you share the word, I think it's a bit more difficult because you're not actually joining in, you're just really listening. So I really want you to imagine that you're sort of joining in what I say to a certain extent. I was really pleased that we um, prayed for the children. It was a great thing. They are the future. You're now seeing the past. So. <laughs> it, it doesn't get any better. Thanks. I am really surprised to be here because when I actually found out who was preaching, I thought, I'm not going to bother turning up. I'll know exactly what he's going to say. And I've had a lot of like people praying for me and encouraging me. I've had wise counselling that I talk too quietly and then someone else who said I talk too quickly, Nikki. Uh, so I've got to try and get it right uh, and it's not going to be easy because I'm not a preacher, I'm not a Charles Spurgeon or anything, um, I'm just an ordinary person trying to bring the word. I am not the son of a preacher man but I am the father of a preacher man. Yeah. I'm sure that's really going to help. Anyway, I've got to introduce myself. My name is Noddy, uh, but I'll let you into a secret. That's not my real name. No, my real name's Robert Norris. And I believe I've got an American name, which is Robert A. Norris III. And I've got a hyper-charismatic name, which is... Bishop Bobby, and I've also got my God Central preacher name, because we've got a couple of good preachers here, Jim, Seely, Menard, so my uh, God Central name is Jimard Minseal. <laughs> and a lot of people are going to be thinking that sounds like a preservative, <laughs> but they are into preserving and restoring people, so, so you can call me Jimard afterwards, that'd be okay, I'm not too worried. Anyway, when Ben asked me to speak, he said, uh, you know, he gave me some advice. He said, you do your testimony. And uh, although my testimony is really, really important to me, it's not exciting. There's no epiphany or anything. <laughs> so that was out. But I'm going to share another testimony later. So then, favourite Bible verse. And uh, I haven't got a favourite Bible verse. I, uh, different times in life, different verses taught you. There's thousands of great Bible verses, and you know when you read the Bible, they speak to you at different times about different things. So, a favourite book? I haven't got a favourite book. The only one I really do say that I like is Shawshank Redemption. That's only because everybody else likes it, so I just sort of agree with them. Uh, I really quite like Bambi, you know. So. <laughs> Anyway, I was trying to do all this in my own sort of way to try and find out what to speak about. And then I thought, I'll speak about something from the Bible. That's sort of like a good, really, starting place. Yeah. Old Testament, sort of good stuff. We could talk about Jesus, but we wouldn't be going home until, well, tomorrow. And I thought, well, I'll talk. The rest of the Bible is a lot about letters to the church. And I thought, that's it. I'll do Noddy's letter to the church of Pemberley. Yay. Yay. But I thought that's going to be easy. As you say, it's a great church, all the church, all the wonderful people. It's, you know, amazing. And a lot of churches are, they really are amazing. It's a great place to meet and have fellowship. But then I found out that my nemesis, Charles Spurgeon, had actually spoken about it. And he sort of summed it up in two lines. And that was the end of that as well. He actually said, if I had never joined a church till I found one that was perfect, I should never have joined one at all. And the, moment, and the moment I did join, it would have been spoiled, for, I'd, for it would not, not have been a perfect church after I'd become a member. And I thought that was amazing. And then he qualified it by saying, still imperfect as it is, it is the dearest place on earth to us. And that's what I think about church. This is a great place to meet, even if it's just at home or in the Sunday meeting. It's a wonderful place to be with other Christians. So, I have a little, little bit more Coke. 
So anyway, I really thought I was doing that in my own strength, a little bit like Katie last week. And then I sort of asked the Lord what to speak about. And he actually said to me on the next verse that you read. Now I was really praying that it wasn't lamentations or numbers or anything. But we were, we were studying John, so it became John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled, believe in God and believe in me. And then quite soon after that, when I was on Facebook, I had another verse, and I thought they tied in really well together. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That became a bit difficult because I thought, you know, I'm going to be speaking about it, but how do I do that but not lean on my own understanding? And I thought, it's really for you in the church to take out of it what you can about what I say. It's really what God says to you, not what I say. It's not really important. And it was like a real encouragement to me to know that, well, I'm not a preacher. I can just speak and you can take things out of it. And it really all fell together from that moment. And um, it was about trouble and how we face trouble. And obviously, to, to, to take the position where Jesus said that, we have to look back to previous chapters. In, in John 11, when Lazarus had died, all his family were like saying, well, Jesus could have saved him. He could have done this and done that. And when Jesus saw how upset they were, he was actually troubled. As a man, he could be troubled. But then as God, he actually brought him back to life. And I think the amazing thing was that he said, Father, I thank you. And later on, as we go through that, it becomes really important that we accept that Father did everything. They worked together for good, for all our good. As we go through to the other chapters, we see Jesus crying, we see Jesus crying out as a man, he felt everything we did, he understood how we were, um, and we see him troubled again. And then in 13, we have the Passover supper. And I think, when I look at that, I'm thinking about all of us here, if we imagine that we're in the Passover supper, we're disciples of Christ here. He had his disciples there. We love the Lord, we want to have his presence here, we want to have the Holy Spirit. In the Last Supper, they were all there with him. The disciples, Jesus was there. What an amazing thing it would be for us to be actually in his presence like that. And it really started off well. It, Jesus washed their feet and he says, you know, as the Father loves the Son and the Son loves the Father, you are to love each other the same. And this applies to us. We, we love each other and we care for each other. It's really an aspect of, important aspect of what he said. But then he sort of spoiled the party to a certain extent because he said, I'm leaving, I'm going. And they didn't understand what he meant. He knew the crucifixion was coming. He knew where he was going to suffer and where he, everything was going to be changed for all of them as well. But they're not understanding. It's like when you leave, lose a loved one or someone goes from the church or whatever. You know, when they go, you're, you're really, really sad. And you can imagine for everybody there, it was really, really difficult. And it's the same for us as we face those things. And then, obviously, he said that someone was going to betray him. And for them, they didn't know who it was. They're looking at each other. They're thinking, who's going to... Who would do that? We love the Lord. He's... God is our rabbi, he's everything to us. He's shown us so much, we've seen miracles. Why would anyone betray him? And then, obviously, he said about Peter denying him. And in little ways, we do that all ourselves at different times in our lives. We sort of can deny Christ and we can betray him in ways when we don't always mean to, but it's just our human nature. So Jesus saw them and after saying those things, he really saw how troubled they were. And that's when he said, let not your heart be troubled, believe in God and believe in me. And in some ways it's self-explanatory, I think, because troubles will come. We all have troubles. We can have minor little troubles, the computer might break down, you know, the cat might do something wrong. But as you go through life, you will have major troubles. It's inevitable. 
nothing is going to be perfect. It's going to be hard and difficult for you in many ways. But don't let your heart be troubled. Because Christ is in your life. He doesn't want you to be concerned with that. He wants, he's concerned about your relationship with him. And no matter what you face, you know that God and Jesus is with you all the time. So we have to put our faith and trust in Christ in all circumstances. We have no fear in times of trouble. And I really wanted an example to show how that works in someone's life and maybe an example of people facing trouble. And I'd always <laughs> thought it would be sort of a disciple or someone from the Old Testament that would be that example and would really speaking of our life or maybe a hero or a martyr but it was strange that God showed me someone from like middle class America where the gospel is often about your best life now but it was a message that really fitted in perfectly I was um As I was studying this, I listened to Christian music. I really like it on in the background. I don't necessarily always listen to it, but it's always there. I just like to have that as a sort of just to go to. And I was just listening to it, and a song came on. And I really did like that song. And I thought, I'll find out it's by. And then I checked, and it was by someone called Jeremy Camp. Um, I'd heard his songs before, but I'm not really like them. I'd never sort of listen to them again and I thought well I'll find out about his life and then his life story was really amazing how he got through things that were really really difficult and his faith in God became stronger in many ways when he went to Bible college he um, went to Bible school in the evening and he met a girl called Melissa and they fell in love and they were young but they were caught in and Melissa ended the relationship because her sort of journey with God was more important than her journey with him. She wanted no distractions from her love of God. And she said, well, we can't carry on. I want to concentrate on my faith and stuff like that. But unfortunately, she was diagnosed with cancer. And um, when he went back, he to, to be with her. They obviously rekindled their love. And I think feel good God was putting him in that place at that time because obviously she needed him there. Um, they went out for some time and then um, she was in remission and uh, they decided to get married. So they got married, went on honeymoon. But unfortunately, when they came back, um, she was told that it was terminal and that she would have very little time left. And obviously for them as a young couple, they just found love and they were so, you know, they wanted to be together and everything. It was really, really hard to go through that process of him being there with her in hospital and stuff like that. So unfortunately, three months later, she passed away. But before she did that, she actually said to him, if one, come, one person comes to the Lord through me or my testimony, then my life would have been worthwhile. And that was such a sacrificial statement. It was so amazing. Um, and he remembered that when he was going through the turmoil of coming to terms with what had happened. And uh, he managed to rekindle his faith. He understood that God wasn't punishing them, that this was just what happens in life. It's sort of human nature can be really, really difficult. And um, he wrote a song called I Still Believe. Uh, which just recently has been made into a film, which is a really good film to watch. So f about three years later, when he was on tour, a girl from South Africa came along, uh, Adrienne, and she said, you know, your, the testimony of Melissa just changed my life. I was really in a bad place, and it, it made a difference into my life. And um, they got together, uh, and then, like, 20 years later, they've had three children. She homeschooled because of their lifestyle. And then they've now made an album called uh, The Worship Project. And this was the amazing thing to me, that the song that I heard was from that CD that they'd just recently made. And the song was called um, Whatever May Come. And obviously it's about 
life that whatever happens that you know we have no we can't we can't control what happens in that way and the song after was called father i thank you and i thought well that, that's amazing because that's what i just read earlier on and i just thought that's our response to not let your heart be troubled believe in god and believe in me so whatever may come in life Father, I thank you in all circumstances. I still believe in Jesus. And that was a really the message to me that God had shown me that. And it was, you don't have to listen to the songs, just the words mean so much. So that is the end of the story. But I just want you to be, to understand what it is to face trouble and to know the Lord's in it because it's so important that we love the Lord with all our hearts and we know what Jesus did for us and it's an amazing thing so thanks and just like to say that if anyone wants to get up and share a little testimony um, about what God's done they can do um, if not as we finish the meeting if you just like talk to each other and encourage each other because we've all got things that have been difficult and Jesus will help us overcome that Amen <laughs>